In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Cubase 13 and talk about the brand new redesign of the user interface. It seems to have quite a few people divided on the forums about whether or not it's a step in the right direction or it's maybe gone the opposite way. What do I think about it? Well, let's find out. This is the main project window of Cubase 13, and I have to say I really do like the redesign. There's a lot of people that don't, but for me, I think it's more compact. I think it's a lot crisper. However, I do have my reservations about the new look, and it's mainly to do with contrast between uh, the shades of colors used for different controls and the text. So let's start off with the shades. In the inspector here, I think it's pretty difficult to look at it at a glance and instantly find what you're looking for because everything is sort of, you know, it's almost merging together because they're fairly similar. Now, it doesn't really matter if you change the, the scheme overall. I mean, it does improve a little bit if you use a lighter scheme. It's not as bad, but I still think there needs to be more division between these controls. So here's a little example that I put together. Um, I've made the controls blue, so it's a lot more like Cubase 12 to help break them up a bit more. And then I just think for these boxes to be a tad darker so they pop off the background a little bit more and then it might be a bit easier to sort of look at at a glance. This is just nitpicking, but it's still important if you're gonna be working with the software for very long periods of time, being not fatigued and being able to find things quickly is very important. Now, I think this more so comes into play when we look at the mixer. By default, I think it's great. I, I love the new mixer look. I like the new gray behind the faders. I like that it's more compact, it's clear. There are some little UI glitches that pop up from time to time that Steinberg are aware of, and, I, and you've probably just seen that one there. Now, a lot of people are not happy about the text because it's bright white and it kind of competes with the other elements that are in the mixer, and I, I have to agree with that a little bit for the text if you do want it to be darker there is a way around this if you go to preferences and then go to custom color scheme and then increase the v value to about 26 and above and it will darken the text it will make it black but it will also lighten the theme so actually that's not as bad to look at that's i can i could cope with that now where this starts to fall apart though is when you use mix console colors for the channels i love working with colorized channels and this to me is a bit of a disappointment because all of a sudden, I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. The new backdrop for the fader is competing with the insert slots and also the sends if you have these expanded. And then when you have a lot of channels going on in the view, it just looks, it starts to look like a bit of a, a wish wash of gray. There's no separation going on. I think a couple of people have mentioned this as well. Uh, so I've made my own version of the mixer, which will pop up now on the screen. And what I've done is remove that gray box behind the fader, which I think cures most of the problem that I'm having with this new uh, interface when using colorized channels. But then also for where the inserts are, I've made a box that goes across and just reduces the contrast a little bit by adding a, a, a shade of gray to it. So it's not so in your face or at the same level as everything else. And I think on the older designs of Cubase, um, they did this when you expanded the certain slots, there was like a lighter gradient or a darker gradient to it, just to reduce it a little bit so it wasn't always competing for your attention with the other controls that were going on. And I think that 13 could benefit from having this done. Uh, and also with the colorized channels, have the option to turn off this gray. I just find it's a little bit too distracting. Now, something I am happy to report about is the track icon. So by default here, they are a lot smaller, but if you click on an icon just above, you can rescale it from this window here. And when you make the channels narrower, they shrink. And when you make them bigger, they expand. And the behavior of this, I think is a lot better than it was in Cubase um, 10 and upwards. I believe that Cubase 9.5 was still the best though when it came to track icons and their visibility. For example, here in this image, you could scale them to be a lot bigger and they just look nicer. But I think there's a massive improvement here in version 13. So that, that's good news. 
at least. More importantly, what do you think of the new Cubase user interface? Is it a step in the right direction? Is it kind of meh or do you think it's really bad? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments box below. And if you do have some really good constructive suggestions, maybe head over to Steinberg's forum and voice them there too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.